From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago. I'm Kristen Tomat. And I'm Sean Mayberry. Here's the latest news. Chicago police are investigating the shooting of a 25-year-old man near the Lakeshore campus overnight. Campus safety says the victim has no affiliation with Loyola, so apparently the only connection to the university was the proximity of the shooting to campus. The shooting happened close to the intersection of Sheridan and Pratt just before 4 a.m. Witnesses saw three cars fleeing the scene, one red, one silver, and one black. The victim was shot in the thigh and drove himself to St. Francis Hospital in Evanston where he was in stable condition this morning. Even though there was no connection to the shooting, campus safety reiterates that students should remain cautious when traveling alone late at night. A Loyola professor has pleaded guilty to taking prehistoric artifacts from public land in New Mexico. Professor Daniel Amick is the Loyola Chair of Anthropology Department. He admitted to taking artifacts from an archeological site during two field trips to New Mexico. Amec will serve a year's probation and has agreed to return the artifacts. No word on whether Loyola will take disciplinary action against him. A Loyola spokesman says the university won't comment on employee matters. The upcoming 2012 core curriculum has all of Loyola talking. Some students, faculty, and alumni are worried that the new program will lack diversity. President Garanzini disagrees. in an area that's not your particular field of study, that the course hasn't been for the job. Garanzini spoke to the USGA and addressed Loyola's futures plans, as well as people's concerns. The new core will hit religious studies, black world studies, and Islamic studies the hardest. Some of these current classes will still be offered, but will not count as core. Students on campus are taking action to preserve classes like senior Amanda Suttle. The core curriculum is like only just, it's not even half of the problem with diversity at Loyola and we feel as though they're taking more from us. There are more plans in place to further discuss Loyola's new core curriculum. We will follow the updates in the weeks to come. Spring break is just around the corner and it's earlier at Loyola than other schools. Here's how the timing of our spring break compares to the schools in the area. Loyola's break begins Monday, March 7th and lasts till the end of the week. Students at Valparaiso University get two weeks off for break beginning March 3rd. DePaul University has its break from March 19th through the 26th. Both Columbia College and UIC spring breaks start March 21st. The timing of Loyola spring break seems to be throwing off some students' plans too. Victoria Servnak is live outside our studio. How's it feel out there? It is freezing out here. Besides that one week with the weather in the 50s, it seems to be consistently cold. Definitely not good weather for a spring break. The timing, I, I definitely don't like the timing because uh, the weather is just starting to get warm, even in Florida. And I actually wish that it was aligned better with other universities and other events that are going on further into March. Um, I actually don't like it because it's still cold outside, so I really don't get an actual spring break. I think it kind of sucks because then you can't be on break with everyone else, and then you can't really meet up with a lot of friends. Yeah. Well, um, it actually doesn't affect me <laughs> that much, um, but for students, I think it can be difficult sometimes um, if they're trying to coordinate plans with their friends and family from other universities with friends from other universities, but you know what? A lot of people are just going home for spring break. Victoria Servnak reporting live. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Victoria. Have a great spring break, even if it is early. Mayor Daly will be, will be making a series of speeches as he prepares to retire as mayor after 22 years in office, and Loyola will be one of his first stops. The mayor will be speaking on campus the Monday after spring break in Casbir Hall at 5.30 p.m. Tickets are free to students, faculty, and staff, but there are only 200 available, and we hear they are going fast. Loyola's newest art exhibit is now open and is stirring up a lot of conversation around campus. It's called Post Secret, 
Confessions on Life, Death, and God. Frank Warren's popular post secret books came to life at the exhibit's opening reception Thursday night. People from around the country send in postcards that are now on display in the Ralph Arnold Fine Arts Annex. Each card follows the theme of religion and now it has changed lives and attitudes about death. The opening reception was filled with members of the Loyola community looking to connect their person's stories to those told on the postcards. It's really for diversity, really, because you see, you know, all faiths are going to be represented in this project. Even a lack of faith is represented in this project. And, and it's, it's not judging, it's not, it's not excluding, it's really just anyone can come and talk about it and see what they, see what they want to see. The exhibit is open to the public on Saturdays from noon to four. It's open to the Loyola community from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. The post-secret exhibit will be at Loyola through April 9th. Starting next fall, Loyola will offer two new learning communities, both housed in Baumhardt at the Water Tower campus. Learning communities are not new at Loyola, but so far they've only been at the Lakeshore campus. Baumhardt Hall on Loyola's Water Tower campus will offer two upperclassmen learning communities starting next fall. Loyola currently offers six freshman learning communities at Simpson Hall on the Lakeshore campus. Tara Sullivan oversees the learning community programs. Students in a learning community live in a dorm room on a floor or wing designated to the topic of the community and attend several classes together. Beginning next year, learning communities will expand beyond first-year students. Baumhart was a logical choice for the new learning communities because of the challenge of creating community there. The learning communities at Baumhart will be modeled after the ones at Simpson. So we thought as long as we wanted to create an opportunity for sophomores, juniors, and seniors to be involved in the learning community, that Baumhart would be a great way to do that. Freshman Ken Stromdahl lives in the social justice community at Simpson. He's enjoyed his experience so much that he hopes to live in the new School of Communication learning community at Baumhart in the fall. I took that one because I wanted to get a broader scope of what it's like to combine the communications aspect of advertising along with social justice because I feel a lot of problems with social justice is they're not communicated properly. Sophomore Mitch Catalano lived in the Global Citizens Learning Community last year at Simpson Hall. He liked his experience so much that he became a mentor for learning communities. He recommends students live in a learning community. I would uh, in fact more than suggest I would probably recommend highly as in like you should do it. You know, not just think about it, but you really should. Ken also recommends living in a learning community. Because it's a great way to find students and friends with similar interests. It helps the process of transitioning into college a lot more. Students interested in living in one of these communities have until March 15th to apply. One of the new learning communities at Baumhart will focus on the School of Communication. Student Media Manager Ralph Brassett will teach the course that accompanies the SOC Learning Community. For this class, students will be responsible for pitching stories, interviewing, production, and filming. We're going to be producing a regularly scheduled TV show, probably weekly. And what it's going to do is focus on the city, which means it's pretty wide open in terms of what the subject matter is. Brassett plans to put the show on the web and also hopes to eventually secure a TV channel for the show. Coming up, find out which Rambler broke a school record as a freshman. And we'll give you an exclusive sneak peek at Loyalist Prize's new athletic center. Stay tuned. There are so many fun things we all can do to be healthier, no matter who you are or where you are. So let's move. Here we go. Let's stretch in the grass. What a play. Let's play tag. Wow, unbelievable. Let's jump up and down. Oh, what a way to finish it. And most of all, let's eat better so that we have the energy we need to play an hour a day every day. Everyone can play. Just go to letsmove.gov to learn more. So, where are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally, guy. Oh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Who says that? Everyone. 
Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Welcome back. Loyola's Rambler Bucks will now be accepted at four off-campus restaurants at the Lakeshore campus. Loyola recently announced that students, faculty, and staff can now use Rambler Bucks at Five Guys, Metropolis Coffee, Shabuka, and Subway. Restaurant owners think it will bring more business. The Rambler Bucks has been a great way for uh, Shabuka to be exposed to a larger segment of the student body and the students and the uh, staff at Loyola. So it's been uh, an excellent way for us to generate more business by seeing more faces um, from the Loyola family here at the store. Two other restaurants that are going to be opening in the spring have also shown interest in accepting Rambler Bucks. Brittany Arnwood is here with sports. Thanks, Sean. And the weather right now is not the only thing that's making Rambler fans bitter. The season has come to a close for the Loyola men's basketball team. The men lost in the first round of the Horizon League tournament to Detroit 90-69 to on Tuesday. They finished the season at just over 500. Graduating seniors Polka, McCammon, Sterling, and Hill all played their hearts out finishing up their collegiate careers. Polka finished third on Loyola's career chart for rebounds with 989. And another senior has earned an important role in an individual honor. Rambler guard Jeff McCammon has been named the Horizon League's Sixth Man of the Year. This is the second year in a row a Loyola player has won the Sixth Man Award. Junior Walt Gibbler won it last year, and McCammon was Loyola's leading scorer this year with 14.5 14 point, 14 points per game and a record 83 three-point shots. The women's basketball team honored two very important figures in their game on Saturday against Detroit, alumni Jim and the seniors. The Ramblers took on Detroit for the 64th time in the Horizon League history to close both the home season and Alumni Gym forever. Built in 1923, Alumni Gym served as the home of Loyola's basketball through the 1995-1996 season when both men's and women's teams moved to Gentile Center. It is an historic piece of Loyola that will always be remembered. While the women may have lost 71-62 to Detroit, they are looking ahead to Cleveland State on Thursday night. Out with the old and in with the new. While we say goodbye to a historic piece of Loyola Athletics and Alumni Gym, we welcome the brand new Norville Center Athletic Facilities. The near $22 million state-of-the-art facility is equipped with weight rooms, athletic offices, study hall, lounges, and locker rooms for each of Loyola's teams. The new facilities are geared toward both athletic recruitment and the future vision of Loyola. While the facilities are to be used by student athletes only, the weight rooms may be available for students to access during the construction of Hallis Gym. The center will be officially open on Thursday afternoon when a ribbon cutting ceremony will take place on the southeast side of the building at 3 p.m. On way to your, a way to make what your mark here at Loyola could be to break a school record, and that's exactly what freshman James McLaughlin did. He set a school record in the triple jump at the Horizon League Indoor Track and Field Championships in Ohio. Although McLaughlin struggled a bit in other events at the meet, like the long jump, he came back to leap 14.64 meters, which was enough to snatch second place in the category. He surpassed former Rambler James Gilden's record by more than two feet. Congratulations, James. That's it for sports. Thanks, Brittany. You're welcome. Start getting real, Chicago. A special audition tape could land you seven new housemates. Coming up, the popular flash mob sensation hits the city. Oh, this isn't good. <laughs> I was a gift from him to her. I'm going to the animal shelter, which isn't necessarily bad. I just hate the stigma associated with shelter pets. People will think I bite or that I spray everywhere. They're the ones with problems. <laughs> I'm totally fine. Adopt me. You'll see. I'm going to go pack. Hey, Luis, did you know that you're Elmo's plan? Your plan? Yeah, Elmo's mommy said that if Elmo is too sick to go to school, the plan is that Elmo stays with Luis and Maria. Oh, yes, we have that plan all in oh, place. Oh, great. <laughs> You never know when your child will be too sick to go to school. So have a plan ready so your child can stay home and get healthy. Luis is the man because he's almost planned. The man because he's almost planned. <laughs> to learn more about preventing flu, visit flu.gov. 
Welcome back. We may not have come such a long way after all, baby. The first comprehensive report by the White House since 1963 shows that we still have a way to go. The study found women earn 75% of what men earn despite the growing female workforce. 61% of women age 20 and older work. The study also found that more women have higher levels of education than men. More women have completed high school, received university degrees, and graduate degrees than men. People from London to New York have done it, Oprah has done it, and even Chicago is doing it. Victoria Cervenak investigates just what the flash mob cessation is all about. The Bean Freeze, a recent Chicago flash mob event held at the Bean in Millennium Park, had people freezing, but not as you would suspect. At 1 o'clock, people walking around suddenly froze, held their position for five minutes, and then dispersed as if nothing happened. These seemingly random events are a result of the internet age, which is used to organize the big gatherings, including the bean freeze. I was honestly worried that there wasn't going to be enough people to show up, and then once it started climbing to 100 more people a day, I was kind of getting a little nervous, but it turned out, it turned out all right. Flash mobs differ from regular mob gatherings because they usually are just an innocent and pointless act. They are intended to shock people not involved in the prank, who sometimes happen to prank the participants instead. Flash mobs began as a form of art to encourage spontaneity. I joined the Flash Mob page Chicago because I just wanted to be a part of something fun and random. I just like to do stuff like that. So I think the part of it is just to get out there and do something, do something fun, do something that gets attention, be the, be the center of attention. I'm all about it. First Flash Mob took place in Manhattan at the Macy's in 2003. It was a social experiment created by Bill Wasick of Harper's Bazaar to highlight social conformity and poke fun at hipsters. Flash mobs have no agenda or political purpose. It's just people having fun. Victoria Serbnik, Loyola New Chicago. Some of the most famous flash mob freezes took place in Grand Central Station and even Chicago's No Pants subway ride. If the phrase when people stop being polite and start getting real sounds like your kind of party, then you are in luck. Casting directors for MTV's Real World are coming to Chicago's Mad River Bar and Grill on Saturday, March 5th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Each applicant must provide a photo either at the casting or on the website at bonhammurray.com slash rwcasting. You must be between the ages of 18 and 24 and bring a photo ID if you have a strong personality and are unafraid to speak your mind, the real world is looking for you. You know, I've always been a fan of the real world. Maybe I'll try out. I'll probably be there Saturday. All right, I'll see you then. <laughs> That's our news for now. Thanks for watching. Join us after spring break for more Loyola News Chicago.